Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Eccolo il duro. Sei contento che l'hai fatta crepare, pazzo assassino! Ci ho pianto, De Maria. Si è solo allungato il conto che Rizzo ci deve pagare. Guido le ha detto che sono stato io a mandare gente alla corriera. Lei me lo può confermare, commissario? Me lo conferma? Sì. Tu a Rizzo non lo devi nemmeno nominare! Se non quando stai... I diamanti sono arrivati ieri. Partiranno domani col volo delle seggi. A parte te, che altro sa del colpo? La mia donna. È esattamente la terza volta che dei diamanti transitano a Fiumicino. Se te li fai scappare un'altra volta, ti assicuro che io ti lascio, hai capito o no? Questa volta si fa. Ma lo sai che ora tocca a te? Tocca a me cosa? Sanno che tu sai. Ti do tre giorni di tempo. Sistema le tue cose e cambia città. Guido, se esci di qui, crepi! Se non avete motivo di trattenermi, commissario, io esco. Domenica Tony mi sparerà, non prima. Dove sono i diamanti? Se ti metti d'accordo con me, te la cavi con le stimmate, come San Francesco. Se no qui c'è il terzo chiodo. E te lo ficco nel cuore. Da Marco volevano sapere evidentemente qualche cosa. Che cosa? Chiedetelo a Rizzo. Ammazzami Rizzo. Ora, qui perché io ti ammazzerò la prima occasione. And welcome back, ladies and gents. So here we go, Blood and Diamonds, the Italian collection from 88 Films, disc number 786. This one here, um... Yeah, you will, you've heard the intro, there was uh, all manner of uh, issues with this, but we, we finally got down to it, we got down to brass tacks. It came out towards the end of last year, I held off on actually reviewing this one, because mostly I knew that there was a slew of other titles coming out, plus December, 
plus on top of that as well you might as well try and group these things together we're almost pretty much caught up i think the next review is going to be cannibal holocaust but i can't remember if cannibal holocaust is 77 or 78 so if it is 78 then there's going to be a break if it's not 78 then there's not going to be a break see how maths work uh let's give you some details on this one as listed on their website which it strenuously reminds people in block caps locks red text this item is also available in the usa and canada because it recently branched out so if you're over in the states you don't have to import this motherfucker you can just buy it over there well let's give you the blurb from the 88 films website a follow-up of sorts to his earlier film the seminal caliber 9 from 1972 blood and diamonds from 1977 blasts its way into the familiar plateseteshi territory leaving scars bullets and tire tracks in his bloody wake after being set up by the mafia gang he is part of, Guido, played by Claudio Casanelli, is sent to prison, upon which he vows to take revenge on those who betrayed him. Another must for all collectors of high-octane Italian crime thrillers from the 1970s. In the special features on this one, we have a limited edition silver boss gloss slipcase with brand new artwork by James Neal. A limited edition booklet with articles by Francesco Massaciani and Andrew Graves and of course Rachel Nisbet. A brand new 4K restoration and 185.1 aspect ratio by ITV Content Services. High definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation. LPCM 2.0 English audio. LPCM 2.0 Italian audio with newly translated English subtitles. An audio commentary with Italian cinema expert Troy Holworth. Journey of Love, discovering Fernando de Leo's feature-length documentary. Blood and de Leo, a portrait by Luca Marenda. Italian opening, intermission and closing titles. Italian theatrical trailer. A reversible sleeve with new artwork by James Neal and the original poster artwork as well. The technical specs on this one, it's official release date from 88 Films on the 24th of October 2022. Released in both region A and B. So that's uh, Europe, Australia and America. The picture format is HD 1080p 185.1. Audio format is 2.0. Language is English. Certification 15. Runtime is 1 hour and 42 minutes aprox. And there's one disc included in this set. So here we go. Um, kicking into another Fernando de Leo uh, feature. A director that sometimes gets lost in the thorough there of uh, genre maestros. Um, from Italy of this thing, but with an incredible back catalogue of movies actually. Uh, a guy who worked on <laughs> uh, delivering a, a, a degree of class alongside some gnarly grit. It's kind of this weird juxtaposition of the guy knew how to capture action and intensity whilst at the same time not sparing you on the on, on the a bit of the gnarl. Um, this one, like it says, is a kind of a follow up uh, we use that usually in those kind of spiritual sequels to Calibre 9 which is also a great movie I believe Arrow Video put out Calibre 9 so you can still track that down uh, their version was excellent in the release um, but yeah DeLeo's a, a, an interesting guy but without jumping all over the place which I have a want to do I think if you check out the Discovering uh, Fernando de Leo feature length documentary Journey of Love from this dish you'll get a bit of a background and almost a kind of tick list of the things to check out if you enjoy this movie. There's a lot to like here. Barbara Boucher is like one of those reasons to very much like this movie. But at, at its core you have a, a kind of... A, kind of i was gonna say lovable but he's not really lovable anti-hero in guido which is obviously a terrible name for an italian criminal character um played by claudio casanelli who is a great genre actor within his own right kind of safe cracker so to speak who is is uh, set up and uh, sent away to prison and essentially is on a one-man mission to wreak vengeance and vengeance will be sought uh, a couple of twists and turns in this one. Don't want to go too much into the deets. Uh, suffice to say, if you enjoy Polizateshi cinema, this isn't maybe one of the high watermarks, if I'm honest. Even by 77, things were starting to get a little bit long in the tooth. If you imagine the timeline being that uh, Jali became popular 
in the very, very early 70s, very late 60s, early 70s, and runs for a shelf life of popularity for about three, four years, kind of dying out in 74. Now, once I say dying out does not mean disappearing. There's plenty of titles that are successful after that, but I mean the the, the throng of interest starts to disappear. Uh, Police Tetsu kind of picks up the reins from there and kind of continues the criminality, police procedural, that, that sort of element forward, and then that kind of runs its course another four years it's about 77 78 that those movies are still coming out but they're not as popular anymore and by that point we're moving into the kind of the, the zombie territory a la Ful fulci and then even some of the weird sci-fi and just blatant italian genre ripoff cinema that you get kind of dotted through the very late 70s into the 80s so this one is not maybe one of the higher watermarks it doesn't have a lot of the full-on tense suspense that some of them have but it does have an incredible amount of fast-paced action and that's kind of where blood and diamonds shines for the most part uh claudio Casanelli is riveting as guido he's he's like he's an incredible character that you just want to spend time with to see if this bad guy is going to get the vengeance that he so deserves the cinematography is absolutely wonderful and the 4k restoration is mwah, chef's kiss um it's really 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 good they've done their work here i sometimes always feel a bit cynical with the 4k restorations that they never feel too dissimilar from the 2k but this one really popped on the screen really really nice the audio cleaning work as well is excellently done um i did switch on a little bit of the old uh, audio commentary with troy holworth never listened to a full audio commentary i tend to switch them on in different sections listen through and he's having the ball talking over this one as well so it was kind of awesome to hear um his runtime is actually really reasonable there are a lot of police attention movies that are happy to go well over the hour and 45 minutes and this one manages to get what it needs to get done without ever feeling like there's a degree of lethargy in the in the runtime uh, it does it succinctly delivers what you want uh, you get all the set pieces and all the the, the, the kind of payoffs ending um surprisingly and I, I don't know if i'm maybe <laughs> maybe i'm misreading what they're trying to do ends on a somewhat positive note which once again isn't always the want of police satoshi movies they tend to you know everyone gets burned at the end of police satoshi movie for the most part um even if the cops catch a criminal the cops the, the journey is usually a broken man at the end or if the criminals within the element of the story managed to get away it's usually at a heavy cost this one kind of felt like the sun was maybe rising as opposed to setting on a brand new day so it, it kind of interesting how that works um on top of that the score nice and vibrant very much in line with what you would expect in terms of the actual disc itself it's a good one actually that like they don't overload it with special features which i know some people enjoy but i felt like everything had its place here so specifically as i mentioned earlier on uh, the commentary is good i really enjoyed the feature length documentary and fernando de leo but then like i said before i think he's a director that a lot more people should spend a bit more time actually um checking through the catalog because he's got he's got a lot against them very very interesting guy at this time period um also the uh, portrait of by luca Miranda of blood and de leo is great as well and it's cool seeing the, the intermission and closing titles and opening titles in here from the Italian ones. Like, I love that as an element in their cinema over there, which, you know, obviously comes from things like opera and theatre, where they just have that intermission. This is not a movie that necessarily has the length to merit an intermission, but part of me likes the idea of slipping out, grabbing a little G&T, and then returning back to the auditorium for the rest of the movie. Uh, artwork super crisp. And this is a good release. This one will not skin you to buy some of the recent 88 films titles where they're like yeah this is a deluxe collector's edition of zombie 5 and you're like why <laughs> why is this 27.99 for for this not great movie is it the cardboard packaging i'm paying for because that kind of feels like a lot this one here is delivered well it doesn't have all the pomp, pomp and circumstance of some of their other releases but at the same time delivers kind of what you want and plenty of bang for your buck so you can get this one on Amazon at the moment for like 16 quid, which is not skinning the bank 
and it is definitely one that sits well maybe not at the top but well within the greater italian collection they're obviously going to start picking off some 4k um uhd stuff which is kind of where we're going with cannibal holocaust which up until recently was held under shameless's uh, purview so i imagine Shameless lost out on the 4K UHD restoration in favour of 88 films. So I can imagine them picking up a few titles over here that other labels have put out more recently, like in the last five years, by giving them the old 4K UHD treatment. Um, I think we have... What else do we have coming out? Um, a couple, actually, like just on, on all genres. I think House, at House by the Edge of the Park, I think they've got the 4K UHD coming out as well. That won't fall under the Italian collection by any stretch of the imagination, but we should be seeing titles like that coming out as well in the old 4K UHD. So it's, it's kind of cool to see 88 films making that push towards there. We'll see if their special features keep up with the, the aspirations there. I like to think with the 4k uhd stuff i like to see a bit more ceremony in the release which generally means they put a bit more effort into the special features uh, blood and diamonds cool little movie i would give it a four out of five uh, i really had fun with it i mean like like i said before it's not top tier uh police movies by any description or any imagination but for the most part delivered kind of what i want here i kind of rivet the story good performances high octane action really well shot great score so, I mean, 4 out of 5 is where I'm landing on this.